more Raspberry Pi videos, this time another case, top five cases. But in this one, you know, there's a lot of mass marketed clone cases out there. We can get the case specifically designed to drop a Raspberry Pi 3 and Nintendo 64, Super Nintendo, Nintendo, Atari, hybrids, you know, you name it, they're out there. And there's some really beautiful ones. Some of my favorites are like the Nest Pi case, the, uh, the Raf's Tendo case, Tiny Tendo case really beautiful cases out there. But what are my top cases that don't have screens? Because if we're talking with screens, there's a lot more things you can incorporate. You can incorporate bar tops, arcades, uh, portable, like Game Gear, PSP, things like that. So in this video, it's Pi Cases Custom, my top five with no screens. Here we go. All right, number one is using a PlayStation 1. Take out that CD-ROM drive and get your screwdriver out. Get really up close and personal. You do need quite a bit of adapters for this and some ribbon cables, things like that for it all to work. But once it works, you can actually get that working LED working, power buttons working, get the USBs wired so they come out the front just like the stock controllers do. And uh, it comes out really well. A lot of people like doing this build. And at the end of the day, it looks just like PlayStation and the Raspberry Pi plays PlayStation just fine. Controller cases, uh, taking an Xbox controller, cutting out the top, and adding a Raspberry Pi Zero. You can do those with other controllers as well. There's the biggest controller you can get your hands on, the better. I've heard people getting them in Super Nintendo controllers, but it's a very tight fit. Uh, but, you know, as you can see, they did it here, and uh, direct wiring into the micro USB there, it works. A little electrical tape might go a long way here, though. Uh, cassette tape, why not, right? Get an old cassette tape, it's retro, goes with retro gaming, you can fit a Raspberry Pi 2 in there. Um, cartridges, right? Nintendo 64 cartridges, we're going to also see some other cartridges as well. Back to systems, you could do the NES, the SNES, a lot of people don't like to cut those open though because of kind of their, uh, their price tag. Uh, but uh, you can get GameCubes, especially GameCubes that are broken for really inexpensive. So again, carve this thing out, throw in your, uh, some hubs, throw in the ports to the front, and uh, you can get that looking good really quickly. As you see here, get the ports in the front, <laughs> maybe get a better tag than RetroCube, but uh, there you go. Uh, mini Sega Genesis, so again, using a old school console to um, make a case out of. Now, Sega Genesis is much cheaper than the NES and the SNES. You can find around probably a lot more, so a lot of people make them into cases, but they play Sega games just fine. That might be one of my complaints about the uh, GameCube is the Pi 3 doesn't play GameCube, so the case is cool, but people are gonna be like, well, let's play some GameCube, and you're gonna be like, uh, sorry, bro, that doesn't work. Uh, so that's the only thing, my personal, why I don't necessarily like the GameCube as a Pi uh, holder. Now, the Pi cards. These are super popular. I'd have to say they're probably, bar none, the most popular setup in this entire video. And that's when you take an old Nintendo cart, and uh, they actually make little kits for it so that you, all you need is a hot glue gun, um, and uh, you can get that working just fine. So here's another Pi case, and that's what it looks like inside of the Pi case. Um, as you can see, you just get a small little USB port, and you get a little extension for the micro SD and the power cable, and uh, next thing you know, everything just plugs out the bottom of it, and it's a self-sustained retro gaming kit. Um, another shot of the uh, cassette before it was opened up. You know, you just have to hollow it out, do some cutting, and uh, get the Dremel out. Another cartridge, getting a Sega Genesis cartridge. Um, I don't believe the Raspberry Pi 3 would fit in here quite well, and as you can see, they didn't do a very good job of cutting this. But, I mean, if you go at it cautiously, you could definitely use many different cartridges, not just NES cartridges, N64 as we saw, Sega, and uh, if you're creative, you could probably do it with the Super Nintendo uh, as well. N64. And last but not least, uh, one of my personal favorites, which just it seems like there was a lot that was on here, like VHS. You know, you get VHSs for next to nothing, buy them for free, you know, go to the thrift store, you get like 10 for a dollar, something like that. You might even have some lying around your house. But uh, they did a Raspberry Pi 2, uh, but they cut a hole for the micro 
uh, for the SD card on the side. They have a USB hub to expose three different ports. And uh, on the front side there, it reveals the HDMI, the LAN, the video output, the power. Uh, it's all there. And uh, here you can see the actual setup. It has an on-off switch here, HDMI here. They, do, they got rid of all the connectors and the rubber grommets to save the most amount of space. And uh, USB hub over here for all your USB ports. You got a Wi-Fi dongle on there. You won't need that for the Raspberry Pi 3, but um, there you go. Um, oh, and the, it's a copy of Saving Private Ryan. If you wanted to know what video it was. Oh, it says it right there, Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> Right on. Let me know what your favorites were in this uh, in this group, and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know if I missed some, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.